good day and good vibe and welcome to another episode of chill art chill art is a public service program of the leesburg center for the arts the program's goal is to help people shift focus to the positive body mind experts and guest contributors from across the globe volunteer to present their mindfulness modalities and give our viewers tools to better cope during challenging times then after their presentations we walk you through a short, no artistic ability required art project. Think of them as fun, creative, moving meditations that calm the soul and raise the spirit. This episode of Chill Art is premiering in October, so I'm starting with a quick note. Have you ever heard of Inktober? It happens each year in the month of October. It's a month-long or year-long challenge with prompts that encourage ink drawing. Illustrator Mr. Jake Parker created Inktober back in 2009. The challenge has since grown into a worldwide endeavor, with thousands of artists taking on the challenge every year. Check it out. So, it being Inktober and all, I have been ink-spired to create an episode about another inky thing, ink blots. Many people have seen one of these. It's an ink blot, and this particular very famous ink blot is number one in a series of ten blots used in a psychological test developed by Erman Rorschach back in the early 1920s. He actually passed away in 1922 at the young age of 37. But by the end of the decade, his test became widespread and was used in the field of psychoanalysis across the Western world. The tests aren't used very much anymore, but for more than five decades, they were. That's why people, when seeing a lowly little ink blot like this one that I made, sometimes say, oh, it's a Rorschach test. But it's not. It's just a blot from this week that I made. <laughs> Erman Rorschach didn't invent the ink blot. He simply used it in a very particular way. In fact, he was highly influenced by a popular game he played as a child back in Switzerland in the 1800s. Blotto, or Klexography. Blotto is a game where players make up poems or stories based on what they see in an ink blot. Rorschach loved playing the game so much so that his classmates nicknamed him Klex. Tinting Klex is the German word for ink blot. Later in adulthood, while studying patients and their interpretations of the images, Dr. Rorschach noticed that when he asked them what they saw in the ink blots, they gave responses much different from those of his personal friends, and it got him thinking. He wondered if the ink blots could be used to create profiles of different personalities, of different conditions, and undercover unconscious desires. Over the decades after his passing, many versions of testing and results have appeared. Also worth noting, Victor Hugo, the French romantic writer and politician. He's the author of Les Miserables, a truly creative soul. He, too, was a great fan of playing Blotto. In an article from Flashback.com, Hugo often began with a blot, as was the fashion of the age. Blotto, which involved making random marks and decoding them, became a popular parlor game in the late 1850s. And later in the article, Hugo's sophisticated blot-inspired pen-and-ink drawings were, he wrote, 
for private use and to indulge very close friends. We'll look more into Blotto in a bit. But now, just for fun, let's take a look at the original 10 ink blots from Rorschach's test. This is where your focus and being in the present moment, aka also known as mindfulness, comes into play. Let's look at the blots and see what we see. If you'd like, jot down what you see. There are no right or wrong answers, and this is not a test. This is a little history lesson and a warm-up or segue into creating with the concept of blotto. I will show you each blot. Look at each one and note what you see. If you want, write down your ideas. Then, after a few seconds, so as not to influence you, I'll post what others have seen in the past. This is according to the website www.rorschach.org. Then, I'll move on to the next plot. It's going to go quick. Again, you can't get this wrong, and it's not a test. No one is scoring anything. We're simply using the plots as an exercise in seeing patterns of creative perception.
I invite you to go to the description of this episode and copy the link to Rorschach.org so that you can play this test with your friends. Now, keep watching and learn how to make your own ink blots for your version of the Victorian age parley game called Plato. Oh, and here is a book inspired by that game. I'm inserting some images from a book from 1896. The title is Gobelinks, Shadow Pictures for Young and Old. The Library of Congress has scanned it and released it online so that you can download it. Though I do warn you that it would be 99 pages to print a hard copy of the PDF, which is a bit much. <laughs> if you do want to view it in another form other than a PDF, there is a link in this episode's description to a flipbook version that you can view online. It's from the government. So here are a few pages, just screen prints, that you can look at, get an idea. They're inkblot poems and stories. And this from Wikipedia. Justinus Kerner, a German poet, practicing physician, and medical writer, invented this technique when he started accidentally dropping blots of ink onto paper due to failing eyesight. Instead of throwing them away, he found that intriguing shapes appeared if he unfolded the papers. I'm just going to jump in here because it makes me laugh, because artists are very well known that they can't throw anything out. Well, he elaborated these shapes into intricate cartoons and used them to illustrate his poems. Kerner began a collection of clexographs and poetry titled Klexographian. And here's another note from Wiki. In 1896, a similar game was described in the United States by Ruth McEnery Stewart and Albert Bigelow Payne in a book titled Gobelinks, or Shadow Pictures for Young and Old. The book explained how to make inkblot monsters and used them as prompts for writing imaginative verse. You need to clap and make a sound like I a can't. snap one. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to, welcome to the art tutorial. Uh, we've got a different setup than usual, and that's because I have a hand injury. So I've invited my friend John Benton here to be my hands, and we're going to go through the art tutorial like it's a regular private class. Okay. Okay. Let's... All right. So we are going to talk about the book uh, Gobble Links. And this is uh, something that I've already spoken about on the uh, video earlier. Uh, this is a children's game. Uh, this was a book created uh, based on the children's game Blotto. And we're just going to make the ink blot section of this game. The game is making ink blots and then uh, creating poetry for them. So let's just play around and experiment, John. Let's go. Okay, so what I need you to do, we're using watercolors instead of ink, uh, just because it's simpler. And we have all this multitude of colors. So what I need you to do is put a little water in each of the cakes to soften them up, or what colors you choose to use. So why don't you pick three different colors of your choosing, don't pick yellow. Um, Three of the darker ones and just soften the paint up. All you have to do is put a couple drops of water in. By the time we get to it, they'll be nice and soft and it'll be easy to thin them down. Okay. The other thing that we have over here is we have a, a painter's palette and we're going to use liquid watercolor in those. Because what we want to do is we want to ascertain which papers for you to use at home that will work the best. So I have these papers here. They're already cut into squares. Uh, this one is very slick on the top, much like a poster board, but it's more matte finished on the back. So we'll try those. These pieces of paper are cardstock. Uh, I have two cameras running here, so I'm assuming that you can see these from the way I set it up. So that's cardstock. This is watercolor paper, so that's going to absorb differently than the cardstock, which okay. is smoother. And over here, this is really shiny, like a vellum. But we thought we'd play with that. That's fun. And this is similar to the white with the matte on one side and a shiny on the other. So, um, John, why don't you put your paint 
the liquid paint in a couple of these front pans here so that they aren't so far away. We also have here a um, expired gift card, and we're going to play with that a little bit. And oh, paper. <laughs> paper. Paper towels to do some blotting of the blots. So um, what we're going to do next, John, when you're done with that, don't rush, because I want to read about uh, this game, the goblins. Go right ahead. Okay, thank you. All righty. So gobble is like goblins. So what is the, well, should we go into how to make him? Him, yes, it does have a pronoun, him, or how to play the game. Let's just talk about how to make him. So the gobble link, it is a singular person, I guess, being is drop a little ink on a sheet of white paper, fold the sheet in the center, and press the ink spots together with your fingers. So let's start this way. Let's create the fold in the papers first. Okay. So why don't you try one of the black ones, and I'll try a black one. And I'm just going, we're going to print on the matte side, so we want to fold it this way. Okay. And you might use your... Get this wood house card get a nice crease get a in good it. Crease. Get a good crease in it. Nice and tight. Nice and tight. Okay, so um, I'm going to have you do this. Okay. So why don't you take a little bit of your ink from your palette over there. The liquid. Okay. The liquid. You don't need much. Okay. And you're only going to use one side of the paper. Mm -hmm. And just put a drop or two here or there. Oh, I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out. <laughs> That's blue. Okay. Mm -hmm. So take it and fold it down like this and just lightly dab it. You got a good deal of paint there, so I'm I gonna, do. I'm gonna, gonna put this down underneath. Yep, yep, it. yep. It's it's. Yep. Right up. Right up. Okay. So, oh, yep. yep. This is what happens. You don't need much paint at all. Just a wee bit. Right. Okay. Let's see what you got. Ooh. All right. We're gonna place that. I'm gonna bend it a little bit and place it to the side. Let it dry on its own. Should we do a quick reveal or no, not? No, we got plenty more. Now, okay. we're going to do this one, and you can rinse your, your paintbrush out. Let's do another one now that we've got the hang of it. Again, let's put it over here. Oh, you've already pre-folded I pre-folded for you. Sweet. Okay. Let's go with some red. Okay. You can even draw a line with it. You can place your brush so it squashes down. That's good. All right. Well, we'll we don't know if it's good until well, the result. But we're going to do start. a little bit different this time. You're going to lightly press, but then you're going to take the gift card mm -hmm. and swipe it. Swipe it. And go the other direction too. Okay. All right. Here's so it it mushes. It mushed. Ah. Oh. Ah. See, they're very different, aren't they? Quite. Okay. Let's go on to another type of paper. Let's use some cardstock here. And we're going to continue with the liquid. What was that? Aromatherapy. <laughs> Rosemary. All right. See, I can fold things. I can use the computer, but I cannot lay my hand down to draw. Not this week. Okay, it's still liquid? Yep. Okay. Um, this is going to be a... Purple. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. So this is the cardstock, and all you're going to do is blot like you did the blue one without the credit card. Not so much. Fail. Not enough. You can open it up and put more purple in. Yeah. It's it's so it absorbed quite a bit more. Yes. That's blue. But that's okay. Mm -hmm. This will be fun. This will be yeah. So we'll do work a little more quickly with this paper. Tap and open. It's passable. It's yes. Let's just try another one with the Texas Roadhouse card and going faster. Okay. Again, this is the Steve. card stock. Um, no, use another color. Okay. Either use purple. We'll go with red. Or no, red. Go with red. We'll we'll make red. All the ones we use the credit card for. It's a good way to keep track. Okay, so a little bit more paint. Uh, faster, 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 faster. And go towards the crease. Okay. All right, let's see. Oh, that's good though. But I'm not a big fan of cardstock. It's, you have to work a lot faster. It would have to use um, a, a different ink. Okay, that's a fail. Let's move on to a different ink. Why don't you um, get some paint going from whichever colors you prefer. You <laughs> that's a challenge is remember which one, uh, what one I wet. Now some watercolor paper have um, different sides to them and if you look really closely this one's more slick and that's why I have a check mark I usually do that for my students so that they know to paint on this side which is more textured so uh, which color are we using there was this uh, green, green over here green all right and load up your green how soggy that's, how, good. that's that's fine okay all right, uh, here we go. All right. Dab, dab, dab. We're just using fingers. Just fingers. That's pretty good. It's got some nice gradation in nice there. Nice little piggies, but we'll go yeah. into that later. Um, <laughs> Okay, I want you to do another one, but I want you to do it with red, and I want you to do it with the uh, credit card. Okay. So this is watercolor paper. I think that's a better. Softened. It's just getting Mud. enough of li liquefied on your... Mm -hmm. uh, most people have this type of watercolor, which is called cake. Mm -hmm. I also call it pan, um, as opposed to liquid watercolor. Now, I have tried this with ink. And I tell you, I didn't get as good results with the ink. It's good. Fast, 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 fast. Credit card, credit card. Credit card, and make sure you go towards the uh, oh. middle. So that way it kind of connects better as a block. Okay. Let's see. All right. Uh, we'll see. Okay, so let's... Try this really slick paper. And we'll remember what this one is, right? Because it's so big. And actually, you're going to have to fold it. <laughs> My folding skills have <laughs> abandoned me. Okay. Any color you want on that. So all the pictures in the book were made in this manner that we're doing here. And a great deal of practice will only go to show that the gobble link, as his name implies, is a veritable goblin of the ink bottle. 
and the way he eludes the artist's design proves him a self-made eccentric creature of a superior imagination. <laughs> it is highly to be expected that the animals and birds of prey referred to under more or less familiar names in the accompanying rhymes will be strikingly correct as to anatomy. And because, as upon page 15, the elephants, or whatever they may be, happen to have each a row of interesting tails continuing along the full length of the spinal column. Uh, I do have a couple of pictures that I printed. Again, this is, if you download this as a PDF from the Library of Congress site, um, it's 99 pages, so I did not do this. So here's one page. And while you look at your ink blots, you will find different things will appear. This one I think is so cute. This one, the poem is called Red Riding Hood's Wolf. <laughs> Very Victorian, that? yes. Yeah. Awesome. Well, go ahead, John. Let's see what you all got right, on all this right. purple. It's good. So it's dab, dab, dab. And we're going to use the card on that one. Okay, card towards the fold. Actually, we should have waited for the red, but I do it anyway. <laughs> now, this spreads very differently because it's quite a slick paper. Drum roll. Do, 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 do. Only there's this here. Ooh, that does weird stuff, doesn't it? It does weird stuff. Yeah, I have bigger sheets of this, and I'm thinking about doing full sheets and making them into um, insects. You can okay. also use a uh, laser jet paper, and it's and it's changing just as it's drying. It's mm -hmm. it's um, the density is changing. Very nice. Let's do another one. Again, this is that paper. I'm gonna try. Going for the red this time. Yeah, let's do a red. Let's do the liquid watercolor. Okay. All right, it's more fun. <laughs> I like it. It's good for blot, blot doodling and Sarah Mitchell. That's right, getting a couple of little dots in there might add some real interest. There we go. Credit card? Yeah, mm -hmm. let's do the credit card. I like how the credit card ones come out with this paper. You can see through it. So you don't want to use regular copy paper because it's just not thick enough. This is thin, but it, because it is um, got a different finish to it. This looks more interesting see. already. Ooh, I'll already see stuff. <laughs> That's great. How about that? So what else do we have? Um, all right, let's try this. This is similar to the black paper in that it's... It's got a uh, sheen on one side and it's poster board on the other. Okay. So let's. Ooh, darn it. Darn it. Darn it. It's okay. It's okay. We've got plenty of paper. I will fold them. All right. We're going to try this experiment. You'll have to burnish that down for me. I can't use my dominant hand that way. And we're going to also do it on the slick side. So one on the mat and one on the slick. I have more paper. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's <laughs> rationing the it's all right. paper. I know. Well, the artists can't throw things out. <laughs> so that is the, what side is this? That's the matte side. So let's see what it's like on the matte side. Okay. Back with red or blue? Okay. Or yes, but let's use liquid. Okay. Yeah, I'm going with liquid. Okay. And moisten that brush. That's already it's really, really, really red. red. You didn't clean it, so. Oh, cool. All right, let's see what happens with that. And go ahead and use your fingers, your card, whatever you want. Because we're going to compare this one to this one. And you can practice these. No, you can't. This is the thick stuff. This is the thick stuff. So that was a little bit lighter with the card. Um, okay, let's.
Let's do it on the opposite side. I wonder if I go back into it and, and give it a swipe a little bit more firm. That's a lot ah, of ink. That's a lot of ink. All right, quickly, let's do this one with uh, uh, the blue. Okay. Rinse that off. Mm. Do the same thing you just did. We're just using a different finish. Sometimes I put down a, an old uh, telephone book or whatnot and just keep going from page to page to page. Okay, We're being very a, neat here. That's um, too much ink. Too much ink. Too much ink. For that material, yes. Okay, for so the watercolor, it would have been, for the <laughs> other paper, it would yeah, have been fine. It's great. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera off and I'm going to resituate and we're just going to go through the ink block. Okay. Thank you.